Here we go, section 8.1, defining and using sequence and series. So I think there's a lot of new uh, terms that we're gonna start uh, learning in chapter eight. So let's get started, and take a look at some of the vocabulary. Uh, the first one right here, we have a sequence, and that is an ordered list of numbers. Okay, that is the sequence. Uh, what you're gonna see here are a list of numbers a lot of times in these problems. You know, like two, four, six, eight, and that is an ordered list or a sequence of numbers. So when we talk about the sequence, we have the terms of a sequence, and you'll see it maybe listed as a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four. A sub one would represent the first term of the sequence. A sub two would be the second term, and so on. We have a sub n, and that would represent the nth term, which could be, you know, I could say the a sub 100. That would be the hundredth term, right? So a sub n would represent any term from 1 to whatever it might be. For our next term uh, word right here, let's take a look at series. And series is when a terms, when terms of a sequence are added together. So when we have a series of numbers, we're going to take, let's say, 2, 4, 6, 8, and we're going to add them all together, and that would be a series. Next up, we have summation notation. And what exactly is summation notation? Well, let me show you what it looks like. In summation notation, we've got right here, we'll use the term sigma this large E. And above, you're going to see right here, let's say a number, and I'll put right here four. And that four right here will represent the upper limit. And then underneath right there, you will see the lower limit. Okay. And let's go ahead and Oftentimes you'll see like something like i is equal to one, okay? And that will represent our lower limit. And our lower limit will be our starting point, okay? So let's say if i equals one, it's saying that, look, that's the first number, okay? The first term. And then you're going to go all the way up to, we start with one, two, three, four. Okay. And then the fourth term, that'll be your upper. And that's how much we will go and take the sum of in summation notation. Okay. So the easiest way to figure out, well, how many terms do I have? You know, it all depends on what you see there. Sometimes I can equal two, it could equal three, and then they tell you what's the upper limit. And then you go ahead and already count from there. Now, when you count, though, you always take the upper limit minus the lower limit, and then add one to it. And that'll give you your total of how many terms you should be uh, dealing with when it comes to our summation notation. All right, upper limit minus lower limit plus one. All right. Sigma notation, okay, that is the same as summation notation. As you can see right here, uh, sigma, I'd said that large E, that represents sigma. And so that is the same as summation notation. Let's go ahead and move on to our core concept. And there's several things right here to kind of take a look at. Okay, so we start off, sequences. A sequence is a is an ordered list of numbers. A finite sequence is a function that has a limited number of terms whose domain is a finite set, okay? So when we talk about a finite sequence, there is an end. It's limited. If I have my numbers two, four, six, eight, then that would be a finite sequence. And so therefore, remember, your domain is your values of x, your range is your values of y. So we talk about like, if I put two, four, six, eight, the first number or um, in that range would be two. And then like right here, if I were to kind of put some numbers down, 
the first term would be 2, the second one would be 4, a sub 3 would be 6, a sub 4, 8, all the way down to whatever term we are dealing with or going to end with in this finite sequence. I could say the hundredth term, and then you're going to have to figure out what the hundredth term is or something along those lines in this chapter. Now, if it's infinite, as we go down to the next part in red, it says an infinite sequence is a function that continues without stopping. So what you'll see are the ellipses, you'll see the dot, dot, dot going on. And that's when you know we have ourselves a infinite sequence here. Okay, and continues without stopping and whose domain is a set of positive integers. Here's an example of a finite sequence, right? You got two, four, six, eight. There you have right there is finite. And then for infinite, hey, there's the, the two ellipses, or the ellipses right there, two, four, six, eight, and then you see after that, dot, dot, dot. That's how I know that we're dealing with an infinite sequence. A sequence can be specified by an equation or rule. For example, both sequences above can be described by the rule a sub n is equal to 2n, or f uh, times n is equal to 2n. Coming up with the rule is the hard part right here. You're going to have a list of numbers and you're going to have to figure out, well, how do I, can I come up with the rule for these list of numbers in the series? Okay. And yes, you are going to be able to do that. It does take some practice and a little bit of time. Okay. It's not always straightforward as like, hey, two, four, six, eight. Well, what happened each time? Uh, we're adding two. But I'm not going to say add two. Another way for us to write that is multiply n by two. Crazy, right? 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, and there you go, 2, 4, 6, 8, right? That's something that we are going to be figuring out. So as we kind of continue on, we see right here series and summation notation. Uh, once again, series is when terms of sequences are added together. The resulting expression is a series. A series can be finite or infinite. You go to the next part right there. You can use a summation notation to write the series. So instead of seeing what you have up here at the top, what it's saying is that, hey, you can see that this notation Summation notation is the same thing as saying two, four, six, eight. Okay, right here, four sigma i is equal to one, and then two times i. That two times i right there is your rule, right? And what you're going to do with that rule right there is, as we begin to look at the infinite series, you can see. To the several things that pop out, we have the ellipses right here, meaning it's going to be infinite, it keeps going. But above the sigma notation, you see that infinite sign. So therefore, hey, I know that, hey, we're dealing with an infinite series right here. Moving along, it says both, for both series, the index of the summation is i, and the lower limit of the summation is 1. The upper limit of summation is 4 for the finite series and infinity for the infinite series. Summation notation is also called sigma notation because it uses the uppercase Greek letter sigma written as that crazy looking E. So we have formulas for special series. Okay, with these formulas for special series, uh, these are ones that you're going to want to memorize, uh, more in particular. I guess all three are pretty important. So, you know, get to know them. Um, the sum of the first n positive integers right there, the sum of the squares of first n positive integers as well. Now look, when do you use these? Uh, more specifically, it's when the rule happens to be, or we have i, i squared, and then we also have right here, one. All right, so those are kind of some special formulas. Now, we will talk about how we could figure out and get some of the answers of these 
uh, sum of squares or sum of the first positive integers um, as we move on throughout the rest of chapter eight. Let's go ahead and take a look at our extra practice. Okay. So in number one, it says, well, let's write the first six terms of the sequence. So they give us this equation, all right? A sub n is equal to n to the third minus one. And so our, our job right here is to find the first six terms. And the first term, uh, we will call that a sub one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put right here a sub one and say that that is equal to We'll go ahead and put one in for n and then one to the third minus one. That right there is equal to zero. Let's go ahead. Next up we have our, find the second term. So a sub two is equal to this time two to the third power minus one. Two to the third right there is eight. Eight minus one will get us to seven. The third term in the sequence will be a sub 3. n will now be 3. So we got 3 to the third minus 1. That is equal to 26. And we keep going. The fourth term, a sub 4. We got 4 to the third minus 1 is equal to, now that is 63. We'll go ahead, we got the fifth term, a sub five, and that's equal to, we got five to the third minus one. And so in the beginning, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you put all this stuff down, um, you know, right, show this, showing your steps, plugging things in. And then a sub six, that's the sixth term, so we got six to the third minus one, we got ourselves 215. So pretty much, you just go through the six, the however many terms, and then you can go ahead and figure out what each term ends up equaling. All right, just like that. That's how we find the first six terms. All right, let's go ahead and take a look next at number three. It says, describe the pattern and then write the next term and write the rule for the nth term of the sequence. Like I said, this is gonna be a little challenging. Uh, it's not something that comes easily, but let's take a look and see what we can figure out. I've got negative three, negative one, one, and three. Okay, what is the pattern there? What's happening from each? Okay, are we adding a positive number? Are we adding a, a negative number? Or are we multiplying to get to the next number? Okay, those are all things that you're going to need to start thinking about uh, as we work on these problems. From negative three to negative one, what I see right there is that's gonna be plus two. From one, negative one to positive one, that's plus two. From one to three, that's also plus two. Another thing I see, hey, we have ourselves this uh, infinite sequence because of the dots. So it's gonna keep going. So now let's go ahead, let's try to figure out the rule for the nth term. We want to look something like what we have right here on number one. This is the rule for the nth term, n to the third minus one. So how could, what can we do right here? Start with a sub n. And what's happening each and every time? It's adding two. Normally you say, hey, how about we put like x plus two, right? You may say, let's put x plus two. But does that work for me to get every number? If I plug in one for x, does that get me negative three? It doesn't work out, so it can't be x plus two. That's not our pattern. So back to the drawing board. Since we're going two each and every time, we're adding two, how about right here, we'll put two times n, okay? Because then it gets me from, you know, two, if I put one, I get one. If I plug in two, I get four, right? Or sorry, yeah. But that's not exactly, we're almost there, but it's not quite. Because you now that gets me to the next number, but it doesn't get me the first number. How am I gonna get right here, negative three? 
Well, if I plug in one, right? Let's think about that again. If I plug in one and I put two times one, that equals two. But I need it to equal negative three. So how about this? If I plug in one in for n and I get two, what if I subtract five to that number? Will that get me negative three? We'll try it out, right? Two times one minus five, that looks like negative three to me. How about, let's see if this is our nth uh, pattern for the nth term. How about next up, we'll find the second term. We plug in two. Two times two is four, four minus five, negative one. Hey, guess what? That's my second term. Let's see if it works out again. Two times three minus five. Two times three is six, six minus five. Hey, that's one. That's the third term right there. Guess what? That is the rule for the nth term. I, I wish I could tell you that there is like something that you could just automatically just plug in and it's going to work out. Uh, but there isn't really. It's, it's a little bit of guessing and checking. You're going to have to try things out right here in order to get your answer. All right. So um, if you notice that hey, it's part of the pattern is adding, you know, plus two or plus three or plus five each and every time, that right there will get you your answer, okay? Or be part of your answer, part of the rule that you're going to have to get. Now, adding doesn't necessarily we're going to put plus. You could, if it's, if it's increasing by the same increment, we're multiplying each term. All right, let's take a look next at number four. I see right here we got two fifths, two fifths to four fifths, four fifths to six fifths, six fifths to eight fifths. What's happening each and every time? That's what you got to figure out. Right here, from go from two fifths to four fifths. Am I multiplying by a number? Am I multiplying by two? Maybe. But what happens when I take four fifths and multiply it by two? Does that get me six? No, that gets me eight fifths. So that's not, that doesn't work out right here. What if I go ahead and add two fifths? That gets me four fifths. We'll go ahead and add another two fifths again to get me six fifths because four fifths plus two fifths, common denominators, it's going to be six over five. So Hopefully you see right here, the pattern is just adding two fifths to it. Is that all I need? Maybe. Right here, if I go ahead and put my equation as two fifths times n, what do we get? Well, two fifths times one, hey, that's two fifths. That's the first term. Two fifths times two, that gets me four fifths. Two fifths times three, that's six fifths. So, guess what? That right there is our rule for the nth term. Let's take a look next at number five. Let's see what we could do. It says we're going to write the series negative one plus four minus nine plus 16 minus 25 using summation notation. Things are going to get a little more interesting right here. First off, Summation notation, we're going to go ahead and use the sigma, okay? What shows up at the end right here? Three dots. What does that tell, what should that tell you? Infinite. So we're going to go ahead and put the infinity sign up above. How many terms we have? Remember, that's what goes above. Our starting point right here, we have our first term and there's no, we're just gonna get put i is equal to one. So now the question is, what is the rule? There's always a little trick right here, especially when we go, when we see that the signs change from each term. The first term is negative, the second term is positive, the third term is negative, and it keeps alternating. 
algebraically, how can I show that it changes each and every time? How could I change the signs each and every time? Okay. That's what you have to think about. How can I go from positive to negative to positive to negative? Think about this. If I have negative one, I raise that to the first power. What does that get you? That equals negative one. What about negative one to the second power? Oh, that's now positive one. What about negative one to the third power? Negative times negative is positive. Negative again, we get negative one. The signs are changing. This right here is an important rule that you're gonna to have to kind of remember. So let's put right here, the first part to my summation notation of the rule, I'll put negative one to the i power. All right? But that doesn't get me to my next number, right? I've got negative one, but then the next one I've got to have become positive four. And so now what do I do then? Am I adding like I did maybe in the first uh, problems like four and five? No, it doesn't look like it, right? Because negative one to four is five, four to nine is five, but then nine to 16, that's not five. That's a whole lot more. So that's not necessarily it. What can it be? If you look carefully, and this is why, like, look, it's just going to take practice. Some of these you can figure out. Some of the ones on the, on this exercise in your homework is just, they're just kind of difficult. They're a little mean at times. Um, right here, these are all perfect squares, believe it or not. One to the first power is one. Two to the uh, second power, two. Three to the third power, nine. Four to the second power, right? Or sorry, one to the one to the second power is going to be one. Uh, two to the second power is four. Three to the second power is um, nine. Four to the second power is sixteen, and so on. So this next part right here is actually going to be. We're going to put i to the second power, and that'll get us negative one positive four, negative nine, positive 16. This first part right here, we use this to change signs. So whenever you see a problem where the signs are changing, you're most likely gonna have negative one to the first power or I power or N power, okay? And then from there, how do we get the other numbers? They're all uh, perfect squares, okay? And there you go. There is your rule. Let's take a look and go now to number six. So let's find the sum, okay? Now, a lot of times, remember, they give us a rule and we plug in numbers into the rule, okay? That's pretty much what we know right now. And that's what I'm gonna expect you to do. Later on in the chapter though, you're not gonna be expected to just plug in numbers and add, add everything up. There are rules to make life a whole lot easier for you, okay? Now, the thing right here is, well, how many numbers do we have? Remember, what I told you earlier was you take the top number, subtract the bottom number, and then add one to that. Because think about it. If my first number is, is two, then we start with two, three, four, five. There's a total of four different terms. If the bottom was one, then we have one, two, three, four, five. Therefore, you'd have five different ones. But because our starting number is not one, it's two, it's not gonna be three. Don't just take five minus two and say, oh yeah, we have three numbers we're gonna to add together. No, there's a total of four right here. And so let's take a look at what those four numbers are. Okay, so once again, uh, we start with two, 
Okay, because that's what n starts off with for the first part right here. So I'll plug in 2 for n, since that's the first number. And so here we go. We've got ourselves 2 over 2 minus 1. Okay. And so that right there gets us 2 over 1. And I'll put that down here, which is 2. All right. There's the first one. Our second term we have now, we'll plug in 3. So we got 3 over 3 minus 1. So that'll get us 3 over 2. Let's go to the next term, which is the third, uh, the fourth term, right? We got ourselves 4 over 4 minus 1. That gets us 4 over 3. And then now we go to the last one right here, which is going to be 5 over 5 minus 1. which will now simplify down to 5 over 4. So now our job is to find, find the sum of all this. So remember, the first one is 2, 3, 4, 5. We have a total of four terms. So we're, let's go ahead. We'll find the sum. We're going to add all these up. Use your calculator. And I know that I think Big Ideas wants this as a fraction, and it ends up being 73 over 12. And there you have your sum right here. And there you go. Okay, here we go with the last problem, number seven. Now, if you take a look, we have a total of 18 terms that we're dealing with. And once again, how do I know that? You, know, you take the top number minus the bottom one and then add one to it. So 18 minus 1, 17 plus 1 is 18. Remember, just because the top number, um, you have a top number, doesn't always represent the number of terms you have. Just look at number 6. Okay, so keep, uh, keep trying to reiterate that. So if my goal here is not to, like, add... 18 uh, numbers together. How am I supposed to do something like this? Well, where we have special formulas, right? And one of the special formulas right here happens to be the sum of squares of the first positive integer. And how did that go? Well, it went a little something like this. We had n and sigma, and we had i is equal to 1. And we had i squared. And that right there happened to be equal to this equation n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So if you know these equations, like I asked you to memorize them, hey, on this problem right here, easy. Because let's look, n is above the sigma, and that's what's above the sigma is the 18. So all I need to do is plug in 18 in for n. So we got 18 times 18 plus 1 times 2 times 18 plus 1 all over 6. And you've got a handy dandy calculator there. You could be able to plug that in and then you can get your answer. And this answer ends up being 2,106. Okay, and there you go. I'm not expecting you guys to add up 18 numbers or 100 numbers together and try to find an answer. Ain't no one got time for that. So 